Uh, we've got everything from uh, changes to the marriage laws in Thailand, follow up to that huge fireworks explosion in southern Thailand earlier this year, uh, CCTV cameras along the Malay border, and uh, a follow up, to, and in fact, a massive crackdown to those uh, online scam gangs around some of the border areas of Thailand, all well, coming up in today's TNT. And it's a beautiful day here in southern Thailand and really appreciate you dropping in. Thank you for all the people who go to the trouble to comment and especially those people who have subscribed to the channel. And I suppose I should mention our sponsor, Five Star Marine, fivestarmarinephuket.com. Now starting off with this uh, story printed in the Kalsod English Facebook page. And it says the cabinet has approved amendments to civil and commercial laws to allow people of all gender to legally form a family that is legally binding, including engagement, by replacing the words husband and wife to that of a person. And a government spokesperson says this will enable people of all gender to have legal rights when registered as a family. As for the draft equal marriage bill, uh, apparently it's on track and the draft bill will soon be submitted to the Council of State for vetting before going to the Parliament. So this is the first step toward uh, a process which will eventually amend the Marriage Act. This one recognises uh, civil partnerships of, uh, of all genders. So let's check on some more reporting on this. We go to the thepatianews.com. Thai Cabinet approves same-sex marriage bill. OK, I think they've sort of jumped the gun a bit with their headline, but let's go into the details. And it says Thailand's Cabinet has green-lighted is that greenlit or greenlighted? The Marriage Equality Bill to pave the way for the legalisation of same-sex marriage. And it says, if mandated, it will position Thailand as the third country in Southeast Asia to recognise same-sex unions after Taiwan and Nepal. Well, I'm not sure if Taiwan and Nepal are officially Southeast Asia. They're certainly not in ASEAN. Anyway, we're fiddling with the details there. The marriage equality bill is expected to be formally submitted during the upcoming parliament session. That starts on December the 12th. And the Prime Minister, Seita Tawi Sin, an advocate for LGBTQ plus rights, has pledged his government's commitment to advancing the bill alongside two other crucial pieces of legislation, a bill granting transgender individuals the right to alter their official gender markers and a bill to decriminalise prostitution. So there should be no surprises here. Both the Per Thai Party, the Move Forward Party and other parties made these pledges before the election. It's just now that we have a timeline. Now, who could forget that huge explosion down in southern Thailand in July? It was a fireworks factory, and some of the photos were horrific. Uh, here's one published in the Bangkok Post. It says, victims of huge fireworks explosion sue for 300 million baht. And uh, a total of 682 people have sued two fireworks traders and a construction contractor for damages of 300 million baht over the huge and fatal warehouse explosion in Sungai Kalok district in July. Now, it's quite clear that uh, those three people don't have the resources to pull together 300 million baht. Exactly where they're expecting to find those damages, well, I don't know. It says 68 lawyers filed the civil lawsuit on behalf of the 682 plaintiffs at the Naritawat Provincial Court. And it follows the explosion at a warehouse in Muno, used to store fireworks on July the 29th, in which 11 people were killed, 389 injured and 649 houses and three schools damaged. Well, some of them extensively damaged and beyond repair. And the warehouse owners, a 42-year-old and his wife, were present at the court, along with a construction contractor who built the shelves in the warehouse. It says the couple and the construction contractor already face criminal charges that include recklessness causing death, substandard construction causing death, illegal trading and importing fireworks, and making unauthorised alterations to a building. And there's uh, just uh, one photo, that one's from Thai PBS World at the time. 
you can see there not only the explosion site but the area around it which has just been totally flattened and as you can see that uh, building in the center there pretty much uh, damaged beyond repair if somebody had asked me when that explosion was i would have said it was probably earlier in the year but there you go according to the story back on july the 29th now the prime minister is also heading down to southern thailand and bangkok post reports sata to visit strife riven deep south next week the prime minister is going to visit three southern border provinces of naritawat patani and yala as part of the government's efforts to resolve the conflict in the strife torn region many have tried many have failed the Prime Minister's visit to the region, including a tour of the far southern border provinces on November the 27th, and a plan to deepen cooperation with Malaysia, demonstrates the government's commitment to addressing the problems residents face. And of all the problems the Prime Minister's trying to tackle at the moment, this one's probably by far the most complex. And according to a government spokesperson, among the issues raised at a meeting were reforms of budget allocations to address the problems in the far south and a proposal to revive the Advisory Council on Management and Development for the region. Well, peace talks, uh, more economic development. I didn't think surveillance was part of that. This story reported in MalayMail.com. Thailand says building electric fence at border with Malaysia, installing 357 CCTVs to stop smuggling. And Thailand's currently building an electric fence along its border with Malaysia and also plans to set up 357 close-circuit television cameras along the same stretch to stop cross-border smuggling. And further down there, it's quoting the Bangkok Post saying the Defence Minister says the project would help improve border security and also prevent smuggling of migrant workers, weapons, narcotics and contraband. The first phase of the electric fence and CCTV project will be at Naratawat province, with Kalantan and Parak at its southern borders, particularly Naratawat's Takbai district. Why? Well, it's because some parts of the river in Takbai district are narrow and made smuggling or illegal entry across the Thai-Malaysia border easy. And then try to curb smuggling, and that includes things like cigarettes, liquor, firecrackers, drugs and vehicles. You've got a pretty long border there, and putting CCTV cameras and electric fence at one part of the border is just going to move a lot of the smuggling to another part of the border. And then you've got so many legal crossings, uh, I can't imagine that uh, this is going to slow the smuggling well, much at all. And talking about illegal activities on some of Thailand's borders, this story, and it's from the thailand-business-news.com, and Thai evacuees from Myanmar are investigated for involvement in call centre scam. It says Thai nationals repatriated from Myanmar are being investigated for a call centre scam by the CIB. And according to the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, at least 120,000 people in Myanmar and about 100,000 in Cambodia have been forced to work by gangs running fraudulent call centres. And of course, uh, the Thais as well, who are currently being moved back to Thailand, various ways uh, across parts of northeastern Myanmar, as well as being taken over into China and then flown back into Bangkok. And the Ministry of Digital Economy and Society has assigned the CIB to investigate a call centre scam involving Thai nationals repatriated from conflict-affected Myanmar. Measures are being taken by the Thai government to protect its citizens from criminal activities and those responsible for illicit operations. And the Royal Thai Consul General in Kunming in China is working with the Royal Thai Embassy in Beijing to facilitate the repatriation of Thai citizens who were stranded in Myanmar after crossing the border into China. And the story goes on saying that several cities in mainland Southeast Asia were identified last year by the Thai government as hotspots for fraudulent operations. And these include several cities in the Shan State, located in the eastern part of Myanmar, which shares a border with China to the north. Additionally, Poi Pet, Sihanoukville and Savay Ring, sorry if I've got that wrong, in Cambodia, as well as other locations, including the Philippines, were also identified as sites of concern. 
and an additional 266 Thai citizens who were stranded in Myanmar after crossing the border into China are scheduled to be repatriated via chartered flights. And then further down, upon returning to Thailand, these individuals will undergo immigration and screening procedures to address any potential human trafficking or forced labour issues. So yeah, who were scammed and who went there voluntarily just uh, looking for some extra money? But some good advice at the end of this article to try and avoid being caught up in these scams. Uh, Do your research before engaging with any online offer or request. Check reviews, ratings, testimonials and credentials of the person or company you're dealing with. Never send money or personal information to strangers online. Use secure payment methods such as PayPal or credit cards. Be wary of unsolicited emails or calls that ask for your personal or financial details. Verify the identity and legitimacy of the sender or caller before responding. Be careful of online relationships that seem too good to be true. Don't fall for sob stories, requests for money or promises of marriage from someone you've never met in person. Well, I could do a brand new story every single day from now until the day I died if I was going to cover that last one and report any suspicious or fraudulent activity to the authorities and your bank. And the story originally written in the National News Bureau of Thailand. But this is a much bigger story than just those ties who have been repatriated. And we go to the BangkokPost.com and it says Myanmar hands 31,000 telecom fraud suspects over to China. Myanmar authorities have handed over 31,000 telecom fraud suspects to China since law enforcement officers from both countries launched a crackdown on online scams in September. And the suspects include 63 financiers and ringleaders of crime syndicates that have cheated Chinese citizens of large sums of money. According to the Ministry of Public Security, the crackdown has achieved significant battle results. More than 100,000 people engage in telecom fraud each day in at least 1,000 scam centres in Myanmar, which shares a border with southwest China. And with telecom scams in Myanmar targeting Chinese citizens surging, the Assistant Foreign Minister in China, Nong Rong, visited Myanmar this month, saying China was ready to work with Myanmar on tackling cross-border crime, including online gambling. And Myanmar's ruling military is facing attacks on multiple fronts in its borderlands as an alliance of ethnic minority insurgent groups combines with pro-democracy fighters to challenge the junta's rule. So you've got the the Chinese military, Chinese police, the Burmese junta, all these insurgent groups, plus all these online scam gangs, which are pretty well resourced. They're just going to find other locations to run their operations. So a pretty lawless situation. Now, that takes us to this final story. And a story from Voice of America, voanews.com, Thai broadcaster removes Taiwan interview alarming media analysts. Now, we reported this last week, uh, an interview on Thai PBS with the Taiwanese foreign minister, but the local Chinese embassy was not happy. And media analysts are criticising a Thai broadcaster's decision to delete an interview with a leading Taiwan official after China's embassy in Bangkok complained. Thai PBS aired the interview with the Taiwanese Foreign Minister Joseph Wu on November the 3rd. And then on November the 11th, China's embassy in Bangkok issued a statement on social media criticising the interview. The embassy statement labelled Wu as a Taiwan separatist and said the interview hurt the feelings of the Chinese. Chinese state media Global Times also chipped in with public criticism. The outlet did not name Thai PBS but called for Thai media to correct relevant wrongdoings. And shortly after those statements, the Thai PBS interview disappeared from the broadcaster's YouTube channel without explanation. So, of course, we're after a please explain, and it's all come down to a Senate Foreign Affairs Committee. And they said, we also asked Thai PBS to cooperate by using caution in publishing further programs of such nature. Our committee calls for all parties to adhere to one China policy, which Thailand follows and maintains good bilateral relations. 
And the One China policy, recognised by Thailand and 180 other countries, states there is only one sovereign state under the name of China. However, it leaves ambiguous the status of Taiwan, at least as it's understood by the United States and some other countries. Ambiguity indeed, leading to the Thais caving into the Chinese ambassador in Thailand and removing that interview. Now, I'm wondering if there is a Thai broadcaster out there, a private broadcaster, not the Thai PBS, who would like to republish that interview. I'm sure other people downloaded it. Uh, I would upload it myself. But really, uh, I'd just be pissing in the wind because I'm just not really consequential. But maybe someone like Cowslet English, they should perhaps republish that interview and leave it up on their website so we can all see it. Anyway, that's the way things have unfolded on this Wednesday, the 22nd of November. Hopefully you're more up to date with things happening around Thailand. I've enjoyed bringing it to you and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.